Hello, my name is Katherine Troyer, and I'm part of the team that is delighted to bring you Monster Mayhem. So it turns out you have a few more questions before you're ready to play. That's great, because we definitely have answers. So please check out this series of frequently asked questions and answers so that you can get ready to play Monster Mayhem. And if you don't see an answer to your question, feel free to reach out to us, because we definitely want you to come play with us. One of my favorite parts about Monster Mayhem is that the outcomes of the tournament are actually supported by data and evidence, both from the texts themselves and from horror scholarship. So one question we get asked a lot is how exactly does it all work behind the scenes? The truth is, is that it can be a lot of fun to just get together with friends and say, I think so-and-so would win in a battle against anyone else, fight me. And then no matter what evidence is provided, you just stick with your guns and say, well, we'll never know. But when we were making Monster Mayhem, we kind of wanted to know what would happen if a certain contestant from one text was up against a certain contestant from another text? And how did not only evidence from the text, but evidence from horror scholarship help to support that outcome? In other words, what do scholars of horror say about how we create meaning and how we determine the people that we think of as, as winners and losers? So here's what we did. We took our 64 contestants and we analyzed those texts looking for the following information. How many kills did that character have in that particular text? And we chose that one because it made sense to us that if a character had a lot of kills, they'd probably be pretty good in a battle royale style battle. The second thing we looked at was what is the percentage that that character is present in their text? And our reasoning was is that the more a character is present in the horror of their original text, the more they probably know about how to fight dirty. And finally, the third thing that we looked at was the critical and audience reception of the text because we felt like certain contestants might be empowered knowing that their text is a beloved text by everyone. What we then did is we took that data and we used a probabilistic algorithm, which means that we entered it into a formula that allowed us to determine the likelihood that that contestant might win in a battle. And very similar to other bracket style tournaments, we have four brackets and characters are divided up so that there's 16 characters per bracket, which means that using this algorithm, we could determine whether a contestant was likely to be in the number one spot, so the most likely to win the bracket, or all the way to the 16th spot, the least likely to win. We added in, just for the sake of complicating things even further, some bonuses and penalties that are bracket specific because there are certain trends or elements that happen within the brackets that we thought were interesting to figure out. And so those bonuses and penalties also contributed to the likelihood that a character might win in a battle. When it was time to actually battle the contestants against one another, we used a formula that would put them together, put their numbers together, and then determine, based on a random number generator, whether or not contestant A or contestant B won. So the random number generator allows us to have just a small potential for upsets. And the reason we did that is because let's face it, upsets are really exciting. And horror has taught us that sometimes the most unlikely characters survive. Now the, uh, that chance for upsets is not super big, but it did allow for us to have just a little bit more of a note of surprise. And finally, our formulas allowed us to determine whether or not our characters sustained injuries in their battles. Because let's face it, if the number one spot and the number 16 spot go into battle against one another and the number 16 spot wins, that was one heck of a battle. And chances are that 16th seated character has emerged totally damaged. Whereas on the other hand, if the number one seated spot has beat the 16th seated spot, we kind of expect that. So that was probably an easy battle. What you can do is, is you can use the written play-by-plays to have some explanation for how not just the battle unfolds, but also for when there is upsets, how that might have happened, 
and why certain characters are more primed to win.